Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are making apple cider vinegar. And I know there are tons of videos out there online about how to make apple cider vinegar. And like I said in the pineapple vinegar video, um, a lot of them are wrong. Uh, and if not wrong, misleading, or perhaps uh, they don't really understand the science behind how cider vinegar is made. So, I thought I'd do apple cider vinegar, pretty much the same as we did with the pineapple vinegar video. Um, I'm gonna start out by juicing these apples. Okay, so what I have here is just over a liter of apple juice. Um, doesn't matter what kind of apples you use, use whatever is available to you, whatever's local, whatever's close, whatever is at the bottom of your fridge and you need to use up. And you want to juice them. Um, and if you don't have a juicer, that's fine. Uh, if you look at the pineapple video, I just used a blender. Um, you could use a blender, you could use a food processor. Ultimately, it's probably best to start with just juice with as little pulp as possible in it. Um, if you use a blender or a food processor, the pulp's gonna be in it, that's not a problem. It will settle out uh, during the first part of the process, which is using yeast to turn the sugars into alcohol. Here's why I don't like most videos that talk about how to make apple cider vinegar. Um, Making vinegar is a two-step process. You need an anaerobic step, an anaerobic step, which is the first step, um, which is happens in the absence of oxygen. You're using yeast to convert sugar to alcohol. That step has to be done first. Then the second step is aerobic, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Realistically, at this point, I could put this bung on the top, uh, with an airlock and the yeast that is naturally occurring on the apples will start to ferment. You don't need to add anything to this. The yeast will start to ferment. They'll drive all of the oxygen out of here through the airlock. This will fill up with carbon dioxide. As soon as it fills up with carbon dioxide, the yeast will start working faster. And within a day or two, most of the sugar will be gone and it will be replaced with uh, carbon dioxide, alcohol, and some flavors that the yeast throw off. Here's something that I'm going to tell you to do instead. Instead of allowing the yeast that occurs naturally on the apples to start to work, I would use a beer yeast, a wine yeast, or a champagne yeast. Get them in a little packet like this. Uh, it doesn't take very much to get the process started. And here's why. Um, first of all, it could take five or six days before the natural yeast sort of builds up enough steam to get fermenting. Um, so time-wise, this will happen almost, you know, within hours. Within five or six hours, you'll start to see some action in the airlock. Uh, second thing is the natural yeast, um, you don't know how flavorful it's going to be. Beer yeast, wine yeast, or champagne yeast, you know that it's going to give off the right flavors that you want. Never use bread yeast. Bread yeast is definitely not the right flavor profile. It throws off uh, certain chemicals, certain esters, certain alcohols that give a really sort of strange taste to the whole, whole thing. Uh, and the, the third thing is that the natural yeast um, doesn't have the ability to convert enough of the sugar into a high enough alcohol amount. Uh, as soon as the alcohol amount gets up to like one and a half percent by volume, um, the natural yeast gives out. It can't do anymore. Whereas beer, wine, or champagne yeast can go even higher. It could go, depending on how sugary your apples are, uh, up to about 12%. Higher alcohol, better vinegar down the road. So, um, 
These are really cheap and you only need about a teaspoon worth of yeast. There's enough yeast in there to do 30 liters and we've got one liter. So um, I've probably added too much already. So give it a little bit of a swirl. You could do this in any container that you could put a stopper and an airlock on. Um, you could use a old wine jug, an old wine bottle. You could, I don't know, I've got these beakers. I thought it looked cool. It's going to allow us to see the fermentation happening very easily in the next step. Fermentation lock in and you just add a little bit of water in the top. And that's it for the first step. Uh, we'll just leave this on the counter five or six days. You'll see the action in the bubbler stop and you'll know at that point that you have reached the end of the first step. Uh, so come on back in five or six days. So about a week has gone by and the airlock has stopped bubbling and we've converted pretty much all of the sugar in here to alcohol. Um, in fact, that happened in probably the first two or three days. I left it for a few more days just to make sure that everything settled out. So at this point, what you need is a large open mouth container. Could be anything, it doesn't have to be a beaker like this, uh, as long as you can cover it with a piece of cheesecloth. And I would suggest using a uh, really good cheesecloth, not supermarket cheesecloth. Uh, the holes in that are too big and you don't want fruit flies to get in because they will be attracted to this. So we will take what's in here and there's a layer on the bottom of sediment. You don't want to pour that in. Um, oh, that smells good. You know what, you could pour it in if you wanted to, but you're just gonna have to strain it out later. So if you can be careful, try to leave it in the bottom. And that is really just apple sludge and yeast. There you go. So, let's give that a taste. I would encourage you to, uh, to taste everything at pretty much every step of the process. Oh, that's good. Tart, it's appley. Um, that'd be good just, you know, cold, sitting in the backyard uh, instead of a beer. So at this point, um, if you've never made apple cider vinegar before, you've got a couple of choices. If you have made apple cider vinegar before, then you already have a mother that you can add from your last batch. Um, but if you haven't, if this is your first time making vinegar, you've got a couple of different choices to make. And you can just cover this with cheesecloth, uh, stick it over there on the counter and forget about it. There is Acetobacter, which is the, the next process. Um, there is Acetobacter everywhere. It's in the air, it's on the countertop, it's on your body, it's on any fruit that you've got in your, in your kitchen. It's all around us. And that acetobacter will eventually find its way into here and start the next process, which is converting the alcohol to acetic acid, which makes vinegar. Um, couple problems with that. I use the word eventually because it could take uh, two or three weeks before it really starts to get going. Uh, the acetobacter that's in the air isn't, uh, isn't in a high concentration. So it needs to get in there, it needs to establish itself, it needs to start working and that could take some time. The second thing is you don't know which strain of Acetobacter is in the air. It could be a strain that gives a really good flavor. It could be a strain that gives a really bad flavor. So you want to start out with a strain that you know is going to give a good flavor. I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, you eventually want to eat this, drink this, use it in salads, however. Uh, so you want it to taste good. So you can buy online a strain of Acetobacter that would make a really good mother for this, or you could just get raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar from the grocery store. Um, the Acetobacter or the mother is in here, uh, and it has to be raw, has to be unfiltered, unpasteurized. And you just put a couple tablespoons in this amount and what's gonna happen is the acetobacter in here is going to activate, it's going to start eating all of that uh, alcohol that we've produced in the last part of the process. And it will multiply and over the course of about a week or a week and a half, you're gonna start to see like a mat grow on top, a sort of a thick slimy mat. 
And that is the mother. That's exactly what you want. That is the Acetobacter working hard. And um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna sit it over here on the back counter out of direct sunlight at room temperature. And we'll come back to this and see it. Um, well, we'll come back and we'll see it when it's done. And so there you have it. This has sat on the back counter for probably uh, three or four weeks. Smells absolutely amazing and it has a very healthy mother sitting on top. So I'm gonna pull the mother out and I'm gonna hang, oh, the mother is really slippery, but it's, it's fantastic. Um, and since this is really healthy, I'm gonna use it almost right away in a couple of other vinegar experiments. So keep your eyes out for those videos. And now what you have is, uh, is you have the vinegar and there's some sediment on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna try to leave as much of that as I can behind. You can filter it out if you want to, you don't have to. You can leave all of that in and you can use it. It's edible, it tastes fantastic. Oh my. That is some good vinegar. Mm. Excellent vinegar. So just a little bit of sludge left in the bottom. Pour that down the drain. Don't need to keep that. The mother I'm going to break into two or three parts and use in other vinegars. And this can just stay on the counter. Now this apple cider vinegar is loaded with probiotics. Um, and it is really good for you. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon.